Yan yung last na ginamit natin sa easy actually. Sige po, edit na lang natin. Kunin, kunin mo to. Eh, actually, okay. Hindi <clears throat> ako, sige, edit to from my end. Finish na to, di ba? And fin Tama ba? Hindi, just put, tanggalin mo na lang yung ano, finishing his. Para dire-diretso na, you don't need to edit it na. Just take out finishing his. Uh, so, PhD, uh, a certified... Oh, no. So PhD in organization development. What? Yeah. Uh, what giving? Ganyan, ganyan. Tapos. Sir, Sir Zilbert. Oh. Sorry po ah. Uh, Trinay ko pang i-live na ngayon ah. Naka-live na tayo sa uh, YouTube ngayon. Pero uh, it's okay pa. Pwede, naman, pwede pa naman tayo mag -ana. Okay. I mean, hindi naman yun, like, hindi nyo man nakikita yung slides ko, di ba? Wala. Wala pa naman. Yeah, in-edit ko ngayon eh. So, okay lang. So, na-close na ko na yun, di ba? Wala na, I'm not sharing anything anymore. Yes, sir. Apo. Wala mm. ko ngayon eh. So, do, I'll, I'll manage it from my end. How do we start the program anyway? Ayo. Um, may announcements muna po tayo, sir. Tapos, after the announcements po, you can start with your slides na po. Lagay ko na earn his PhD na, ha? Work earn, just put PhD na lang. Okay, PhD. PhD. Para hindi. Kasi, actually, gusto ko pa sabihin yan. Kasi pati behavioral science, di ko di mo na mention, no? Actually, sa ano to? Si okay. Carol. Hindi, <laughs> okay lang. Alam mo, explain ko na lang. Explain ko na lang briefly naman. Whatever, whatever. Okay lang yan. Eh, hindi naman yun yung importante. Okay. Do you want to show your slide quickly? Or are we live already? Sir, live na po tayo sa, face, uh, sa, ano, sa YouTube. Pero sa Facebook, hindi pa po. Can we start mm. now, uh, ano, sir? Uh, okay na po ba kayo, sir? Mm, Sino? Yep. Sinong, sir? Hello, I show, people. I-show muna namin yung, ano, yung mga announcements. Okay lang ba? Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, ano ba yung question ko? Ah, later. Pa-spotlight na lang yung video ko, if ever. Ah, uh, yes. Uh... Mm -mm. Yan lang. Yan lang ang aking feeling. So, so YouTube, where, which channel or ano, what, what's the link? Ano sir, um, i-chat ko po dito sir ah. Uh, chat, chat. Uh, here's the link po. Okay, I think this is good. Do I need to read something ba from the in from the first one? Ah uh, wait. Um Tumipat ako ng workplace ko eh. Saan ka ba? Nandito sa entertainment room right now. Yes. Pinakialam ako yun. Ano ka pa? Ginaloko mo na yung mga yun. Eh. Tama? 
May caricature ka ba? Yung Lego ni ano? Lego ni Tristan. Kanya to eh. Room niya to. Kamusta naman si Tristan? What does he do these oh, days? Yeah, he's playing all the time. They, I think you need to have a program <laughs> for, for children like them to become more like, get to learn more like coding, ganun. No? <laughs> well, I, I just don't know <laughs> how that's going to work out now. Kasi wala eh, nasa bahay. Ang hirap, hirap i-control din eh. I know they so they're they're feeling like uh as if it's we're, we're we're live na Okay. Jeff? Yes, sir. How many attendees are there right now? Are, um, are we live both Facebook and uh, Facebook and PMAP? Yes, Paul. Okay. So let me know when we're ready to start. Are you flashing anything yet on... Uh, May mga naka-flash na pong announcements, sir. Uh, pumapasok na din yung mga participants po natin. We have 545 registered as of this morning po. Just cue me when we're ready to start. I think day is already ready. And... I have not received the questionnaires on the Excel that you're saying, Ayun.
Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Gilbert Tamasura. I hope everyone is well and safe. I understand that uh, this webinar is, uh, you know, uh, live in the PMAP website, as well as in the Facebook page and other social media like YouTube. So I'm very, very happy to join everyone today. Again, my name is Gilbert Kamasura from HRTX, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Our topic is very timely, and as you know, everyone has been impacted by this unwanted COVID virus, and this is hosted by our very own People Management Association of the Philippines, or PMAP. So thank you everyone for taking time this morning. And uh, you know, uh, due to the enhanced quarantine, all of us located elsewhere in different parts of Metro Manila and in the country, I hear, I see some uh, um, PMAP members and participants coming from Cebu and Mindanao and Davao, also from the greater Luzon area. So in case that you experience technical difficulties, please bear with us. Uh, but our technical team behind this, our PMAP team has been very working hard, supporting us to make this happen, will try to assist us. So as of this morning, I'm very happy to let you know that we have more than 700 participants signed up for this webinar. And while we are aware of the capacity limitation of Zoom, we opted not to close the registration and accommodate everyone aside from Zoom. We are currently streaming on PMAP's Facebook page. And if you can access the Zoom link, please go to Facebook and search for the page of PMAP, that is People Management Association of the Philippines, or look for at PMAP 1956. So let me start now by introducing further how uh, you know the, the the entire flow of the program. So let me just pull up my presentation deck. Let me see. Hello? I think. Gilbert, your screen is not on. Please okay. turn on yes. your camera so okay. I can see you. There. So, our topic today, again, is very timely as we are all experiencing this unwanted COVID virus. So, how do you manage anxiety and trying to promote a high impact employee engagement? So before we go through the discussion, you know, let me just put some nice, uh, you know, thoughts around the, the, of this virus. Uh, sorry, on. Gilbert. Gilbert, sorry. Uh, your screen is not yet on. I think uh, your screen is on. There. On. Yep. Thank you. So very timely topic. So the challenge is very complex, but our goal as HR is very simple. That is to save lives. And as you know, with all of the uh, enhanced quarantine mandates by the government to the entire Luzon and rest of the country, and so with other metro cities, we also have, you know, we were forced to work from home. And so we have a lot of people connected. So again, basically our goal as HR leaders and practitioners is to keep our employees safe, including ourselves, uh, keep ourselves well, all connected, happy, and most importantly, productive. Now, but you know, again, the, there, is this, uh, there is this threat of having the COVID, how is this impacting our anxiety level? So let's do preliminary check. So I have some questions for you. You know, let's answer this by yes or no. So first question, are you feeling overwhelmed Fearful, sad, angry, and helpless while working from home or commuting to work amid crisis. 
Number two question, are you having difficulty concentrating to finish work from home or even struggling to get a full rest or sleep? Third question, are you starting to be anxious on how you and your employees will be paid for their monthly salary because of the situation brought about by the COVID-19 crisis? Are you fearing to travel on public transport or going into public spaces like going to groceries or banks? And lastly, are you worried on how your employees are doing amid this crisis? Or even worried that stocks of alcohol and face masks, which are the most in-demand products, are running out of supply in the market. Right? So if you're done answering all of this, if your answers would be around this, then we have, we have this would be the result. So uh, four to five would mean severely, you have a severe anxiety. And there's the explanation below. If you're between two and three yeses, you'll have a moderate anxiety. And one yes would mean that your anxiety is just building up. Now, we hope that everyone is within the one, but I doubt that you are in one. Some of you probably are between two to three or worse is that you're at the four to five level. So again, with all of this happening, how are we managing anxiety? In order for us to prepare for this program, I've you know, done some good little engagements virtually, which you can, by the way, share with your employees too, or do with your employees. Okay, let's do this exercise. Take a slow and regular breathe in through your nose, and then slowly breathe out through your mouth. Let's do this for 10 times. Okay, great. I hope uh, feel better. Second activity is find a place where you consider it the happiest place, like a Disney. You know, sit in a quiet and comfortably place that an envision to be the happiest place with great memories to make you feel happy. Let's use our hands to make a tight fist. You could put it single or you could have the two hands tight together. Squeeze your fist tightly and slowly open your fingers and notice a feeling of tension leaving our hands. That's making you feel good too. And then let's all close our eyes. Close our eyes and slowly count to 10. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Anxiety should be subsiding by this time. So let's, let's relax, sit down, and get ready to be engaged in a very interesting discussion that will help us improve our managing anxiety while we take care of promoting productivity and engagement for our employees. So let's finally give ourselves a big round of applause, guys. Let's be all give, our, give ourselves a big round of applause. So now that we have settled, we are ready. We have a very good number of attendees, which is building. We have the technical team ready to support our live webinar. Your moderator, yours truly is ready. Your speaker is excited to e-meet you all. And in our session, I'd like everybody to participate by sending your questions using the Zoom chat box. Or for those watching on Facebook or YouTube, please post your question in the comment box. Now let's introduce, let me now introduce our speaker, Mr. Day Lee who is a managing partner of the Fort Wall, a consulting firm that specializes in company culture design. He focuses on building shared cultures 
by using unorthodox tools and methods for organizations to reach and sustain their peak potential. His human-centered approach emanates from deep-seated empathy and disciplined structure, further cemented through a profound understanding of the human psyche through intensive practice of military psychology under the United Nations Armistice Commission. Currently, he is a certified Lego Series Play facilitator, PhD in organization development, while giving lectures and workshops to university students and companies local and internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow and dear PMAP members, let's all meet and give a big round of applause to Mr. Day Lee. Day, turn it over to you now. Hi. Hi, everyone. All right. So uh, just to give you a quick background, uh, if everybody can see me on screen, uh, just send me a hello. Just, I'm just making sure that everybody's able to see this. Uh, don't worry about other people has been asked, uh, have been asking through the chat box, wherein they were saying that, hope this is not just for HR practitioners. Yes, it's not just for HR practitioners because uh, this is set in the Philippine setting. So you will be able to use it, whether it's a corporation, whether it's for individuals, whether it's for your family, you know, it, you can actually apply it as long as you know the principles behind it. So that what we're, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm just going to pull up my slides. So I hope you can see it. So if you can see a black screen, that means that's my slides, right? So just to give you a quick background, uh, this is my name. My name is Day Lee. Uh, everybody can just call me Day. All right, so that's pretty much my name. Uh, people are wondering why my name's like that. It's because I'm Korean, right? So, pero marunong naman, joke lang, marunong ako mag Tagalog. Okay, so it's, it's fine if you ask the questions in Tagalog also. Uh, Bisaya, uh, uh, gamay lang. So it's, I can still understand if ever. All right, so uh, before I begin, I would just like to tell you everything that I'm going to be talking about today, all right? everything that I'm going to be talking about today would be summarized in a PDF that I'll be giving you the link of. So the PDF is going to look something like this. Okay, so uh, it's going to be a 10 page PDF that really puts down all the details on the steps that you can be able to take if ever you're in a certain situation, right? So uh, if you can't write down everything that I'm saying, don't worry, there's going to be a detailed version. And of course, uh, you have to understand that we can't learn everything in an hour. So questions would be good even after the sessions. So I'll be giving you a link where you can even ask me stuff afterwards. Of course, uh, uh, this session is of course made possible by PMAP and it's uh, for free. So please make the most out of it while we're here. Gilbert, on the other hand, as you've seen a while ago, he would be moderating and asking, uh, consolidating all the questions that are relevant because I'm sure we have about maybe 500 plus, we're expecting 700 people like Gilbert said. So he would be consolidating the questions that are relevant and maybe some of you have uh, uh, have double questions and, and he will send it to me. So that's, that's pretty much it, right? So first things first, just to give you a quick background on where I'm coming from, what kind of uh, mindset I'm coming from. So my background is basically in the humanities, military science, behavioral science, and organization development. So I'll be coming from these standpoints, right? How people behave, the psychology behind it, and all these things. So I'll be coming from these standpoints, okay? And I'll also try to break it down, everything as simple as possible. Uh, regarding the slides, don't worry, the PDF is way, way more detailed. The slide is just here so that I can just write on it. So don't worry about it. So Armando said that uh, hope the slide will be provided later. Yes, the PDF is actually way more detailed than this. So yeah, so it's not just, like I said, it's not just for HR practitioners, but people in general, okay? It's useful for individual families, corporations, businesses, anything, teams, whatever you want to do that. Quick background, people might be wondering what is company culture design? So company culture design is basically, very, very simply put, is to make everybody in an organization understand first, why they're there, okay, what they're supposed to do, and pretty much when they know why they're there and what they're supposed to do, they choose to work because they want to, not because they have to. So that's, that's uh, what I really do for different companies. Uh, 
all throughout, whether it's my clients or our own companies that we actually own part of, right? So uh, I'm not sure if uh, the audio is a bit, uh, please tell me if the audio is bad so I can adjust the mic if ever, but if everything's okay, um, no worries about it, okay? So what we're gonna talk about today really is focusing on managing anxiety and promoting engagement among employees. And we're gonna put this in the context of the Philippines, right? So it's always in the Philippine setting, right? So that's what we're gonna be talking about. So uh, there are some people who say that the audio is muffled. Some people say it's clear. So I'm not really sure uh, what the issue is, but I'll try to adjust it uh, a bit more, okay? And I'll try to speak a little bit slower so that uh, people can understand. Muffled a little, okay, muffled your mind, okay. Anyway, so if you look at it at the core, at the behavior standpoint, uh, we can say that behavior is uh, basically a set of actions that people have done in order to make them survive till today. So, okay. So I'll just write it down here is that let's look at behavior. Okay, behavior, the handwriting is really bad, is just a set of actions. I'll just change it to a ball pen set of actions, okay, that has worked, worked for people. That's why they keep doing it, right? So they keep doing this because uh, it actually made them survive or maybe it actually made them feel good and all that. That's why they keep continue doing a certain action so that it becomes a behavior, right? So uh, just understand that behavior is that. So what is then anxiety? Because in order to understand where, what, how to solve a certain problem, it's always good to understand where things are coming from, right? So where things are coming from is that when you look at anxiety, it actually comes from basically something uh, that we call fear, right? So let's write it down, fear, right? Of course, sorry, the blackboard is digital, so it's harder to write. But basically, it's fear. And fear comes from, fear or anxiety just comes from what we call the unknown, right? So if you don't know a certain thing, because you don't know that certain thing, basically, fear comes up. And because of that fear, you become, uh, you become anxious and you, have, you start having anxiety because of the fact that you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know what you're going to be doing next. That's basically the core of it. And we can look at it as a behavior standpoint when in we can talk about it through what we call the flow state. So flow state is basically, it talks about this, your skills, okay? It talks about your skills versus your challenges. So let me just give you a quick, uh, what's this, a brief introduction to this, what we call flow state. By the way, this was made by Mihai Chiksent Mihai. That's how you pronounce it, but spelling is crazy like that. So yeah. It only states that if your skills are very high, so if your skills are very high and your challenges are low, which is somewhere here, I'll put a star over here. It just means that you will start, okay, your skills are high, your challenges are low, then basically people will get bored, okay? It's called boredom, right? But if your challenges are high, let's say if your challenges are high, but your okay, skill is very, very low. So you're someone here, somewhere here, you'll pretty much get what we call anxiety, right? Because your skill does not match the challenge that you are in. So a very good uh, with explanation of what's happening today is that you can look at, uh, look at right now the, the virus or the crisis that's happening right now as a very, very big challenge. It's a very, very high challenge that we have right now. The problem is that even if it, our skills are very, very, let's say our skills are somewhere here and it's very high, let's say, it will still not be able to keep up with the challenge. That's why people pretty much get anxiety. And this is true for a, a lot of different things, whether it's a project that you're working on, okay? If the challenge of the project is very low and your skill is very high, you'll start getting bored, right? And this is what you really have to do to be able to get to what we call the flow state. So this white area here is what we call the flow state. And flow state basically states that it's you in the zone, okay? Or it's wherein you actually grow. So it's also infinite. Your skill keeps growing as your challenges grow, right? 
So you're always in that level. So your skill keeps growing as your challenges grow. Of course, sometimes you get bored because you start from somewhere here. I'll use another color. I'll use a uh, blue color, right? You start from here. And sometimes you're here. Sometimes your skills are higher, so you get bored. Sometimes you get challenged, right? But you basically try to get yourself into the middle, which is a flow state. And it's the optimal state of productivity, learning, and all these things, right? So that's, that's what we're trying to uh, talk about today. And this is where we're coming from. If you understand uh, this, then you'll be, understand, uh, be able to understand more why people behave a certain way and how to actually combat it. So how to actually combat what we have is anxiety is basically trying to match it with a certain skill. So we can look at a modified version of this to understand it more. Uh, it's a modified version of the flow state that is for crisis, right? So this is what we made. So it's basically action versus planning, right? The more actions that you pretty much do, okay? The more actions that you pretty much do here, but you have low planning, okay? If you have low planning, what happened here, what happens here is that you will have anxiety, right? Because it's too much action that's going on, but you don't know where you're actually going. But if ever you're too much planning and then there's less action, okay, what will happen is burnout or what we call analysis paralysis, okay, right? Because it's too much. Okay, so analysis paralysis. So let's look at it that way. So what we have to do in order to actually help uh, people get back into a state of safety, which is basically this area, this is the safe zone. Safety, when we talk about safety and stability here, or the safety is also stability, it's not about the human being being safe. Okay, I'll discuss it more further, but this is what we're trying to do. We have to have a balance of action and planning. And how do you get that action, a balance of action and planning? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. At least we understand where this problem is coming from, why human, humans behave a certain way. And you've experienced this. Some of the companies right now plan too much, even about the future. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? It becomes analysis paralysis because you're also just waiting for what's gonna happen next. The, is the government gonna say something? Especially here uh, in, in, uh, in the Philippine context, you don't know what the, the government is gonna say next, right? Uh, one time it was this, next time it was this, you know, it really depends, right? So it's also about some, uh, some companies, it's all about action. They start helping other people. They even help people who are not part of their companies. They do all these actions. They started put, putting work, at ho work from home policies and all that. And it was super duper, like a lot of actions that were happening. Hence, people started get, getting anxiety because you are somewhere here or you are somewhere here. It's not somewhere over here, right? So we're going to be talking about understanding how to get to that safety level. So when we talk about safety and stability, okay, uh, safety is more about the physio uh, sorry, physiological and also the psychological. So let me write it down. When we talk about safety, it's about psych, so psychological, and also physiological. So physiological is basically our, our needs when it comes to food, shelter, clothing, and all this random stuff, right? Stability, when it comes to stability, it's about corporations, okay, organizations, or teams. Of course, if you're not part of an corporation, organization, or a team, or you're just listening to this presentation, to be able to use it for your family, that's fine too. So it can be individual, okay, or it can be family, or etc. as long as there are human beings there. So Safety is about psychological and physiological. Stability is about the unit, meaning the corporation, organization, team, individual, or whatever that group of people are in, okay? The, the issue there is that people always think that they should do whatever other people are doing, which is pretty much really, really, I'll tell you bluntly right now that it's wrong. Why? Because you actually doing something that other people do is basically neglecting, okay? the people, okay, neglecting the people that you have, okay? Uh, I'll give you a very good example. I saw a lot of people who started donating goods to a lot of different people, to the people in need, the frontliners in need. 
uh, yes, it's really good. And I really thank them for doing that. But the problem there is that they come back to me and say that we actually uh, used all our resources and manpower to be able to help others. In return, they're not able to survive and they're in the red. So it's the same thing as saying, uh, you know, when you ride an airplane or what people say is that you should put on your gas, uh, oxygen mask first before putting on someone else's. It's the same thing for companies too. The first thing that you have to do is get the safety and stability of your company, not the safety and stability outwards. It might sound very, very selfish, but actually it's not because the more you are able to be safe and stable, the more you will be able to contribute to the economy that's going to be the new normal, right? Because we are at the crisis. The more safe you are, the more you'll be able to move forward, okay? So that's it. So uh, it's not about, again, creating new things. It's not about thinking out of the box, but it's about creating that safety and stability first. And I cannot, uh, with this, I have to keep uh, telling people this because they tend to forget. Because we as human beings want to always help others that we forget ourselves, right? So even with our company. So basically at the core of everything, you have to look at it since it's a HR thing, even if it's not an HR thing, at the core of everything are people. The reason why it is a crisis is because people are in there, right? The reason why there is a crisis is because people are affected. The behaviors of people change. That's why it's a crisis. If there were, were no people, there wouldn't be any crisis. There wouldn't be any uh, problems that are around with that. Uh, for example, for the virus that's happening right now. And it's not just the people, but most importantly, your people, okay? And the first thing that we have to understand is that we have to step back and it's actually called, uh, because we react very fast to things. But what we have to do is be very, very proactive Okay, not, sorry, not be very proactive or very active about uh, the, the reaction that we're gonna make, but we have to really be passive about it. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that when there's an emergency, you don't look at it. It's actually understanding why you're taking a certain step at that certain point in time. And it always starts with quality of communication, okay? So quality of communication is basically, okay, you have to look back and say first, why are you saying a certain thing, right? Why are you saying a certain thing, okay? What are you trying to say about that? And who are you trying to say it to? The first problem with, with uh, the quality of communication in crisis always is that people tend to say everything at one time, okay? And they don't really think about it that much. And it might sound very, very, uh, you know, uh, common sense when you look at it, why, what, and who. But in terms of crisis, sometimes our, our brain actually acts differently. So they don't, you know, they don't really think about why you're saying it, what are you actually saying, and who are you actually saying it to. So it's really about why, what, and who behind the messages that you send. So we're, we're going to go deeper into that uh, because of the fact that sometimes you, can, uh, you don't need to tell everyone in your company certain things. Right? You don't need to call everyone for a certain thing uh, in terms of crisis, okay? And we'll, we'll discuss that further in the few slides to come, right? What's very important about these, uh, this quality of communication in crisis always is the truth versus illusion behind it, okay? The truth versus uh, illusion behind it. What does that mean, okay? Most issues, most problems, most wars, if you look at history, okay? And, uh, and all these problems even become worse because people bank on the illusion rather than the truth, okay? So what we're trying to say here is that take truth as the truth and take illusion as the illusion, right? What does that mean? Uh, now is really not, in terms of crisis, especially in the Philippine setting, we all talk about being a family. Yes, being a family is good, okay? And I really, really appreciate people being a family, especially in corporations and taking care of each other. But now is not really the time to think like a family, but we have to be thinking like a sports team, right? To see, that's why we have the skeletal force. Who are the players that can actually move this company forward to making it win, okay? Who are the players that we need right now? It's like a sports team. It doesn't mean that you are 
uh, not uh, what is required. It's more of we're trying to make our company stable first. That's why it's not about being a family, but it's about being a sports team. Because the moment that we are able to find out who are the core players, we can actually help the other people who are non-core players and even pull them up to be core players in the future. All right? So it's slowly making that. And make sure that people understand clearly what the truth is and what the illusion is. Because most of the time, for example, there's a lot of times wherein people do false optimism, right? They say, oh, everything is going to be okay. But that's not, that doesn't really give safety to the people, especially with the workers. A lot of people come to me and say that, oh, I've told, I've assured my people or I assured my uh, staff that they're going to be safe. How are you going to assure that? You have to really specify, okay, you're going to, uh, for example, you can specify by saying, oh, you'll get your salaries until April, but it's prorated. See, that's, that's fact. It's not your full salary, it's prorated. And Dollar right now said they're going to give 5000 but we cannot give it to you yet because we submitted all our documents at this time, but it, they didn't reply to us yet. Every day, we're trying to follow them up. That's basically the truth. The illusion uh, is when you say, oh, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be, yeah, moving forward, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it's not that way, right? So I uh, hope you understand what truth versus illusion is, especially in times of crisis, because you cannot... Uh, people at this time are very well informed, so uh, they would get the information fast. So you cannot really hide things from them that easily, right? Anyway, next would be what we call, okay, what we call, uh, just to give you a quick, uh, this is a format that you can use to find out what are the things that you can work on at this time, right? So this is something that uh, we call the impact feasibility grid you can call it whatever you want uh this is something that we just made so you can use it uh yeah we're not going to charge you for using it so yeah so that's basically this so for example you have like let's say a task okay you have different tasks that you have to do in your company so let's make it a b c and d whatever those tasks are going to be so i just named it a b uh, c and d just for the uh ease of it right so first here is feasibility and it's versus impact, right? Uh, very simply, if you got your tasks A, B, C, and D, it's really grouping the people who are relevant for this topic or for this uh, session or setting and ask, okay, we have this A, okay, this task A. Is it high impact? First you have to ask, is it high impact to the people or the company? or low impact. High impact meaning it actually benefits the company, right? It benefits the company. Low impact meaning that it doesn't really benefit the company at this point in time in terms of crisis. Again, our goal is to be stable and safe, right? So you might say, okay, uh, this task A is uh, very, very high impact because this is about payrolls, for example, okay? What is the feasibility? Then after you said, okay, it's high impact, then you leave it there, right? Then what you do is, okay, what is the feasibility of this? Is it easy to do? Okay, which is here because it's here. Is it easy to do? Okay, which is here. Or is it hard to do, which is here, right? So if it's easy to do, how easy is it to do? So the impacts are pretty much high. It's about here because we might have problems with our online banking system. So maybe it's here, but with impact, high impact, because this gives security to the people to work. Because at the end of the day, if you don't take care of your people, at the end of this crisis, you really don't know what's going to happen to them too. Even if you take care of them, the problem there is that even if you take care of them, some would even choose to leave. And most of the time, it's not really your fault because they also went through this flow state thing wherein they got super anxious about things. And maybe they had to rethink their lives, right? So, okay. So you do it with your other things. Okay. B, let's say this is about your new website. Okay. New website. I think it's low impact feasibility. You can actually do it quite well because IT team can work on it. So maybe it's somewhere here, right? Let's say letter C is hiring. Uh, hiring right now maybe is not your current. Uh, yeah. So it's low impact feasibility. Do you think people would uh, want to be hired at this point? And you're not a tech company, let's say. Uh, you're a manual working company. So of course, feasibility is low. So let's put it there. 
How about letter D, let's say uh, it's something about your work from home policies. Okay, it's gonna give you high impact. Is the visibility? Visibility is somewhat clear because maybe you need to get people uh, to be there. So basically what we're doing here is that when you're able to do this, okay, you're just really looking at these four quadrants, right? Four quadrants. If your quadrant is somewhere here, which we're looking at right now is basically here, you have to pretty much do it now, okay? Pretty much do it now because this will actually manage people's anxiety. And also it will actually make people uh, have uh, things to do and very, very concrete things to do. So this is where engagement comes in, okay? You can actually promote engagement based on this because there's a clear direction to go in and people know what the impact is in their company, right? If you're looking at this area, okay? If you're looking at this area, Right now, uh, I'll erase this one just so you see it. If you're looking at this area right now, then it's pretty much when you have to do it during this uh, recovery or after the crisis, right? So don't think about it now. Most of the time, if it's high impact, but your feasibility is very low because you don't have the resources, maybe it's always better to do it after the crisis, right? So that's that. Uh, the one here where it's low, in, uh, let's say low impact, but maybe high feasibility, which is somewhere over here, what you have to do is to make a task for it. So that if ever this thing has been done, maybe you can start moving it here. Sometimes because the task is super easy, maybe someone can do it individually, right? So that's another way to look at it. Okay, another, then the last one basically, which is here, right? Which is here is, you know, just honestly, I wanna say forget about it. But think about it after, 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 after the crisis, because that just means that it's not important at this time. We talked about letter C as being the website. Website is not going to have, give you a sense of security or safety for the people that are in the company. So do it after the crisis. So most of the time when it's here, I always say, really forget about it for now, right? Until the crisis subsides and it becomes the new normal, right? So that's basically what we're looking at. So if you wanna look at it cleaner, this is it. Uh, you can actually take a screenshot if you want to. Uh, I don't really mind. So yeah, you can look at, look at that now. All right, so other than that, uh, another tool that you can use, I'm giving you some tools that you can use uh, fast. Because this one, these tools you can use fast without uh, other things, right? Another example is, I don't know what to call it, but we use this, I wanna call it the crisis cone. <laughs> so. Uh, most of the time, we also don't name our stuff. We just know how, how to use them, right? So uh, basically, when you look at it, the more certain the information, the less certain the information, okay? And this is basically shows your urgency, right? So if you have certain tasks, the easy way to do it is you put tasks here, let's say here, I'll just write here so that you guys know, if the task can be done, okay, in days or weeks that can actually be very, very impactful for people, right? Also, uh, if you have a lot of tasks, you can put it in, in this way. A lot of people, most of the time, when in terms of crisis, they, it, this, this, very look, uh, this looks very uh, simple, but in terms of crisis, people should be able to organize better and this, these tools can be used in terms of crisis. Uh, in the military and the other places, uh, basically people use these things. For this area, okay, so I'll, I'll write it uh, bigger so that other people can see. This is days or weeks. You can do this in days, days or weeks. This one, you can do it in months, okay? And the last one, you can do it in the quarter, sorry. Okay, why is this? Because you have to do this first, okay? What's more certain right now, it says your certainty. So more certainty, this is less certainty, okay? So you have to do what's more certain and what's more urgent. This just says urgent. Because of the fact you don't know the next month, maybe things will suddenly change. Maybe new laws would come out. Maybe new ordinances will come out, that's why we're not looking at it in a month or a quarter basis. That's why we always arrange it in days, months, and quarters. 
because in crisis things change very very fast and you also have to if you're going to do something for days and weeks the the you have to be able to do what we call momentum audits so momentum audits is basically auditing whatever you're doing here in terms of crisis it's not about your progress if you're doing uh, this task or not it's about in terms of crisis it's always about impact so impact over progress okay impact over progress and this is where technology comes in okay so technology is always there and a lot of people say that oh let's use the best practices let's use this let's use what other people are using again in terms of crisis please do not use the best practices because the best practices may not be the best for you because it's two things when it comes to technology it's either humans manage technology or technology manages human beings it's just that So when you get a technology that's too high of a level for the people that you are working with, right? Or they've never used that certain technology before. You cannot force it to them because of the fact that people are in an anxiety stage, right? So the more information that you give, the more problems that it will be having, right? So don't let okay technology manage you, but you have to manage technology. And to understand that, let's understand what technology is. Technology is basically applied systematic knowledge for practical purposes. This is such so scientific. But what this is trying to say is that what is the best use for this certain thing for you right now, right? For example, uh, everybody. Uh, for example, you have been using phones the longest time for your sales team. The phones work still today. Then why are you forcing them to move into a video conferencing app, right? It's not the time to give new things if things are working in this crisis, right? Uh, I, I've seen so many uh, people do that, Say, and it's not a bad thing because I know that people are trying to improve things, but sometimes their judgment is always skewed, and that's no problem because that's how people behave. So when we say what is best for us is what is best that would work for us, okay? And this is what we call edge of technology. Uh, edge of technology is just using what is best, right? Edge of technology is just understanding what we have today, what technology we have today, and jump off from there, right? So if you're like, let's say, a lot of people are saying that video calls are needed. Let's say video calls are needed. Okay. But when you think about it. Maybe video calls are not needed. Maybe you can just do a, a phone call because that has worked for your company before. Doing video calls would actually even cost you more money, right? And at this time, it's more about stability than safety. Let's say, uh, what is your edge of technology right now? Edge of technology is basically looking at what exists today. So, uh, for example, the edge of technology of let's say phone is the edge of technology of cell phone, right? Cell phone, the edge of technology of, let's say, uh, internet phone. Then this leads to video call, etc. So what does this mean is that if you're using a phone, let's say landline, you cannot suddenly jump into video call. People won't be able to comprehend that. Remember that people are in a in crisis, right? So people won't be able to jump. How you should jump is to be able to jump this way, right? So that's that's also another thing. Also, if you're using technology, please do not change any behavior of people because of the fact that it actually ruins their flow. What does that mean? A lot of people say, especially with video call. So I'm gonna say video. So it's video call. Let's say it's a video call. Okay, when you're doing a video call, a lot of people think that you don't need to dress up. Okay, and you can actually be in any kind of clothes. Actually, the mere fact that you're making people answer video calls, letting them wear anything, actually changes their mindset that they are still at home. You cannot change the behavior of people who are doing uh, these things, right? So, uh, do not change things that are work for them. They go to work before they go to work. They take a bath. They take. Uh, they change their clothes and do all these things because of the fact your mind actually remembers these things and it's uh, muscle memory and all these things. So if you want them to be very productive, maybe the guidelines uh, guidelines are set a specific time for them. Work from from home. Also for you guys doesn't mean that you're going to be working 24 hours. 
set the specific time too. So uh, when you're changing technology, still keep the ones that have been done even before, right? So not to change their mindset because that actually gives them a sense of security and parts like that. Same with me, I have to dress up like this with full everything because of the fact is this is how I give uh, talks and seminars and this is how I do things. If I was in a t-shirt, uh, my mind would actually be somewhere else and it would feel like I'm at home. And even uh, you have to also tell them, even after they work, that's when they have to change their clothes and everything to tell your mind that it is cut also, your, that your work is cut and everything has been done. Okay, so we're going to right now talk about just a few things, which is basically the three uh, steps of, or the three things of change dynamics or planned change. All right. Uh, no matter what, any crisis, okay, will change dynamics. Right. Uh, it's going to be 12 steps, but it's going to be more detailed in the PDF that I'm going to give you because, of course, we cannot discuss everything in a certain amount of time, which is just an hour. So we're going to just talk about the three uh, factors of plan change, right? So first is change realization. Second is consensus building. And third is consolidation. It might sound very heavy, but it's very just easy to understand. So let's look at it one by one. Uh, change realization is just understanding where you are right now. Where you are right now is not the company, but where the people are in this situation. So it's understanding team, right? So what works best? What are the things that we do that we can still use even when, when we're in distance, right? What are the challenges that people encounter, right? What are the challenges you encounter? How did the crisis affect your work dynamic, right? These things, okay? So next, after you understand where your team is, that's when you define your stability goal. So because you understand these the people, the people and everyone, how will you be able to be stable, right? People, uh, I don't know, I have different stability goals for the companies. For people with a big sales team, it's about stabilizing your sales team. So maybe it's about giving them salaries, right? If it's your family, uh, maybe it's about procuring food first. See? Understanding what are their goals? What are their uh, goals right now? Because you have to ask them, okay, what do you want to happen forward, right? So there. The next is after stability, okay, what are your, okay, this is your stability goal. In order to achieve the stability goal, what are your sources or capabilities? So existing technologies, existing things, okay? We're in crisis, we're not supposed to look for new things. We have to look for what is inside first before searching outside, right? That's basically realizing change. That's why it's change realization this step, right? Next would be consensus building. Consensus building is this. It's basically starting with proper listening. You as a leader, you as a company, you as whoever is going to be doing this, okay, this is your role. You are put there because this is your role. If you're head of the family, this is your role. This is your responsibility to listen, okay, listen, of goals, not issues. So right here, goals, not issues. Why? If you ask them about what the issues are, they're going to be negative and they're going to a spiral of, I don't know, doom and death. And we don't want that, right? We talk about their goals. What is your goal for this, uh, this time? What would actually make you safe and survive? Maybe people will start talking about food. So uh, to give an example, in one of our companies, uh, what we did was uh, the first thing that the warehouse workers really thought about was they couldn't get food because all the places were closed and they didn't have cars and all these things. So what we did was we listened to, oh, their goal is to feed their family at least three times a day. The first thing that we did was you know, understood this and said, okay, it's not about salaries first, but it's about using our resources to actually procure food for them good for two months. So that's what we did. And that's what we uh, did. So, okay. So we're looking at goals, not issues. Because if it's issues, they're going to go into a pity circle. They're going to start, you know, doing all these things, right? And as cheesy as it may sound, a next step would be be human. Okay. Be human. What does this mean? You are put there in that certain role and you're doing this because this is your responsibility. But please be genuine. If you really 
do care about them, do it. But don't ever do it because it looks good for your company. Never do that. You're doing it because you want to and you genuinely care about them. If not, maybe, I'll tell you bluntly, maybe you're not the leader for this job, right? So there, I'm going to be very blunt that way, right? Next would be lower barriers. There are people, this is why we say we have to work like a sports team. Lower barriers for effectivity, not convenience. Okay, not convenient. What does that mean? How low can you put the barrier so that your company or people will be effective? Not because it's for convenience. That's why for people who cannot be able to do, maybe give them other tasks. Maybe uh, do something else. Or maybe don't put them in the skeletal team. It might sound bad, but it's for everybody's survival. You are doing this because you want to thrive, right? Last, uh, no, not last, but it's basically more of, uh, I just want to tell you because of this, Use your position, okay? Not as the position, but use it for persuasion. What does that mean? Do not use your position to force people. Use persuasion skills. What does that mean? Understand people. Give them clear expectations, okay? Clear, uh, real information, okay? And real, you know, don't, don't sugarcoat things anymore. This is crisis. The more they're able to, uh, you, to give them clear, un, uh, what's this, opinionated data, the better for that. And then uh, next one, which is important in consensus building, is what we call timeline. So we have first regroup, recover, and continue. This is basically the timeline of a crisis, okay? The timeline of a crisis is basically this. And I'll just show you, okay, this is timeline, right? So when uh, the timeline is when we're regrouping, when we're recovering, when we're going to continue, basically continue is the new normal that we're going to do. So when you really look at it, uh, regrouping is preparation, stabilization, when you stabilize your things, okay, so uh, that's that. Recover is more of learning and alterations. Alterations meaning you have to alter some of the things that you're doing because maybe it does not have impact, right? And continue is basically using whatever you've learned and continue with it because that's going to be the next normal. After every crisis, there are things that will stay, okay? It won't change because that is the normal now, right? Uh, another thing would be when you do this, you have to also look at the departments. The common departments uh, are basically, of course, executive office. So I'm going to put it ex office, right? Maybe there is, uh, of course, HR, business development, maybe finance, of course. There can be uh, supply for people who are in the supply business. Maybe you have marketing, right? Maybe you have IT whatever departments that can actually run in this crisis. So basically just talking about what your skeletal crew is, right? And then after that, you pretty much say, okay, department, let's say executive office, what are you gonna do in times of regroup regrouping? What are you gonna prep for? Let's see, uh, talk to finance or whatever, finance to look at projections, right? When during recruitment. So regrouping is basically about keeping you stable, right? then everyone does their own regrouping. Then what if people start recovering? What are the things that we're gonna do, right? And what are we gonna, the uh, things we're gonna do when we continue? And basically the most important part, after you write this, that's when you put accountability. So executive office, let's say, oh, the CEO, Mr. X has to do this. HR, uh, see whoever, ma'am something, let's say BD, ma'am something, finance, uh, sir something or whoever, people like Pedro, I can't think of anyone, or me, right? So you have to be very, very accountable to see clearly who is accountable for certain things. And of course, you have to get the consensus for this, right? I mean, you don't do things just by uh, your position. Of course, you have to always persuade. And lastly, it's about consolidation. First thing that you have to realize in a crisis is always action Okay, action over perfection. Okay, because we have to do things faster. So, uh, our next action over perfection. This means we always have to have, okay, continuous feedback. So, continuous feedback mechanism. So, audits. So, this is what we call momentum audits so that people can have momentum, okay? How's the progress, how to change? Of course, 
always here. It's always the impact over the progress. Because you might be progressing in something, but it's not making impact, then that's very bad. Okay. Uh, don't worry if the slides are very, very, uh, the video is very poor on your end. Don't worry, I'll be giving you a PDF. So the PDF will be able to uh, contain everything in detail. So I was able to make that, I think, last night. So I'll be able to send that to you. And lastly, is just be cautiously optimistic. Okay. So uh, cautiously optimistic meaning it's not fake optimism. Okay. The worst thing that you can do is have just, you know, a sense of positivity and everything. No, it's not going to help with your safety and security because at the back of people's heads, we know that there is a crisis. So it's not about fake optimism, but it's about being ca cautiously optimistic. How do you do that? Use proper information and everything should be objective, not subjective. That's basically it. So when you really look into everything, it really goes back to this flow state, right? Flow state meaning that, okay, if the challenges of people are high and their skills are very low, okay, they're gonna start getting anxiety. If their skills are very high, but their challenges are very low, they're gonna get bored. And as leaders of corporations or whoever is going to be doing this, it's about you starting from this area to be able to keep your people in what we call the flow state or in other terms, security. So sometimes of course, people would get anxious. Sometimes people will be thinking, why, why are we doing this thing? But yeah, so we're basically trying to get to that level. And it always starts from here. Once we understand why people behave a certain way, we'll be able to change those behaviors through the environment that we create and the resources that we use and what are the things that we should prioritize. So you've seen some of the tools that we've used that could work fastest. So those tools were selected because it's the fastest we use in terms of crisis. Those are the things that we made that sometimes uh, at certain points we use, I also use it in the military. So that, that's what we do. Uh, and they say that uh, military is one of the uh, with this most resilient corporations because of the fact that if you make a mistake, it's not about the money, but it's about people's lives being lost, right? So that's basically where I'm coming from also, right? So it's all about safety and stability, and that's what we talked about today. And don't worry, in the PDF, it will be very, very detailed. And more than that, uh, I'll just give you six guiding principles to guide you. Uh, if you can't read this, it's in the PDF too. It's basically work, workforce, and workplace. At work, you just need to plan out a work arrangement that works, that does not go very far from your current work arrangement, right? Next is to prioritize things. I've given you some tools that you can use to prioritize whatever your tasks are going to be and see if that's required now or later in the future. For your workforce, it's more about really, really consulting your employees and really being genuine about them, okay? Then also next is basically be human, okay? If you're doing this because you wanna make your company look good, don't do it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, people will, for the lack of a better term, see through your bullshit, right? So yeah, sorry for my French, but that is uh, how I'm gonna say it, right? And lastly for workplace, okay? It's really about complying to protocol and policies that you have, okay? Your mission vision statement. If your mission vision really states that you are there for your employees, this is the time for you to prove that, right? This is your time for you to prove that. Next is be informed. The worst thing that can happen is spreading fake news and your employees, because they don't have any direction to go to, they'll start spreading fake news. You don't want that to happen. So as a company or even as a head of family or whatever, you're the one who should be getting the information and which sources that they should be able to get uh, information from, right? So that is something in any crisis that you have to be able to do. Because the moment that people are not informed in the workplace and the sources are not in one place, that's when you know, your corporation or whatever company family starts going apart, all right? So that's it. So, and then with this, we will all welcome the new normal. So basically that's uh, the whole presentation that I'm doing. But I just want you to know that don't worry if you like, for example, for ACES who joined the last minute, uh, if you guys were not able to see it, I, I presume this would happen. So I actually put it in a 10 page PDF, very detailed. Uh, I can show you, this is how it looks like. It's called Managing Anxiety and Promoting Engagement. So I'm just gonna scroll through it. This is how it looks like. So it's very detailed. So whatever I talked about, it's in steps. Uh, of course, 
forgive me if there are uh, errors in grammar and stuff because as we said, we just finished this yesterday. My team and I just finished this yesterday, but we're able to do it. So again, this is for the Philippine setting. Uh, it might not work in other settings because the behavior of people are different. For example, this won't might not work in Korea. This might not work in the US or the Europe uh, area because this is very highly specialized in the Philippines, right? So going back, uh, we're gonna welcome the new normal. And if ever, uh, this is where you can download your free PDF. It's fourthworldglobal.com slash ANX for anxiety. <laughs> of course, we rushed this. That's why we put it like that. Uh, so fourthworldglobal.com slash ANX. Uh, later, I'll be doing another session personally, privately for the people who are signed up to my free online classes. So you can do that uh, later at 7 p.m. I'm going to be doing this same class, but more detailed. Uh, it's going to be in zoom.us slash j and then that's my room code if you have any questions if you need help if you want to work with us uh, i don't know because it's always better to have a um, i'm just saying this but uh, it's always better to have a external facilitator uh, look over or facilitate your your tasks then if you think that's good for you maybe you can uh, contact me at day at fourthworldglobal.com uh, what we really do is use whatever information you have and make it work for you guys. So that's, that's basically what we do. So if you need, uh, or if you just have random questions, uh, go ahead, send me a mail, day at forcewallglobal.com, and I'll try to reply within 24 hours. I'm getting a lot of emails right now, but I'll try my best to do this in this time of crisis. Okay, so that's basically it. If you have questions, I think Gilbert has consolidated some questions. Maybe they have, or... Uh, that uh, Gilbert, uh, are you are you do you do you have any questions? I feel like you never ask me any questions. Okay, so well, they, just throughout they my so, activity, they were so engrossed and very engaged uh, with so many things that oh, you're sharing you. after today. So let's see. Um, from the questions, they're all feedback that they're all appreciative of your time and that. Yeah wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. they register to get a copy mm -hmm. of your, your, your presentation. So um, ladies and gentlemen, again, let's give uh, daily a big round of applause. Okay. Um, are there any questions? I think there's a lot of questions. We're now open to questions. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I answer the first one? So here's a question from um, what are other things should HR do if work has been suspended? Uh -huh. Employees do not have access to emails. Payroll has been released, mm. so basic needs are covered. Okay. So what are other uh, things yeah. should HR do? Yeah, usually HR is basically, when you really look at it in terms of crisis, we're looking at the point where you give safety or a sense of safety to people. If their emails cannot be accessed, I'm sure as HR, you would have their numbers. It's not about giving them work because maybe work's completely suspended, but giving them the right information so that they're actually uh, supplied with this. And right now, more so ever, companies should be proactively giving out real information and how it actually affects them because of the fact that there's so much news out there that we don't know which is true and which is false. So having this, this employees having one source of information or even tips or just sending a message to them or checking up on them, I know it's hard to do, but you know, since work is suspended, this is your new job right now, right? Well, what we can do is pretty much do that. Check up on people, give them information, see how they can actually access whatever information that they have uh, for our warehouse workers, that's what we do to them. We text them. We do the text blast. Uh, we make sure that uh, people who uh, are, are, don't have access to the internet, we use other communication means. Uh, right now, there are so many communication means to do so. Again, don't look at the negative of things. You might be saying, oh, what if they don't have this? What if they don't have that? What do they have right now? That's why we said uh, during the exercise a while ago, it's about looking at what their resources have. Because the moment that we look at what we don't have, it's going to be endless, right? So that's what HR can do for now in terms of crisis, really making people feel safe and getting that certain information that they need properly. So that's basically it. Yeah, any other? 
Yep, sure. Um, still reading, but you know, they there's a point here, and thank you for taking up three things. You know, the work, the workforce, yeah, and the yeah. workplace. People, how they respond. Yeah. To, uh, people naturally react over you know respond or act on a situation. Why is that usually mm -hmm. the case? I mean, uh, in a normal crisis, uh, especially if the BCP or business continuity plan are all in place, uh, mm -hmm. uh, are or any business leaders should be ready upfront to address potential crisis. What are your thoughts on this? Why do people react over respond or act upon situations? Uh, basically, it's just human nature. See, um, people react fast to things and it's just because of our survival instincts. It's just because of our survival instincts. But most of the time, we also react so that we are trying to save something uh, at that point in time. The problem there is that because there's an unknown and we don't know things, we tend to act irrationally about things. And people, honestly speaking, are not the most rational beings uh, yeah, alive, right? So that's, that's how people are. And that's the behavior of people. So give them something. It, you can go back to the flow state again. If their challenges are very high and their skills, their preparation is just very low, then of course, they'll start getting anxiety and they'll try to do everything to fix things. In return, that actually is counterproductive. That's why we say it's always about it's not about active reaction, but about passive reaction. So understanding first where this issue is coming from, understanding what we have right now, what are the resources right now, is the first thing that we should do. Because sometimes even the business continuity plans that you've made uh, for 10 years forward, maybe it does not make sense anymore because of the crisis that's before you, right? So mm -hmm. that's also another thing. Uh, a, a good example would be, Someone messaged me uh, the other day. One of our, uh, I think, one of our clients messaged me and said that, "Oh, we wanted to get you for digital transformation." And I was like, "Oh yeah, 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 I remember that." And they're like, "Oh well, COVID already made us digitally transform." And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 good." Okay, but so he, it, uh, there's, really a question. there's a follow-to question from uh, Olga Sako, yeah. and the question is: it so is it normal therefore to to be negative or to think negatively? in crisis. Uh, this is something to do with the first okay. question I said. Is it a normal state? Right. Yeah, is it, you're, you're saying there's a normal, a new normal yeah. after the crisis, but yeah. in, during crisis, is it normal to be negative from all okay. the... Okay, crisis in itself is negative, but the way we look at things, okay, uh, it should be very, very objective. When you look at it negatively, it just means that you're looking at the things that you don't have and worrying about things that are unknown. Okay, so when you look at crisis, you should look at it objectively by saying, I'll go back to the statement again and say that, what are your capabilities? What are the things that you have to do to be able to be stable? If there are things that actually affect your job, yes, it's negative, but objectively looking at it, how should be able to pivot? So um, yes, emotions are hard to manage, but as a leader, this is something that you should be able to do. And uh, the only way to do that is to clearly, that's why the tools I gave you a while ago, it actually erases emotion from it. That's why we look at it. Is it feasible or not, right? Is it high impact or low impact? It's not about is it negative or not, right? It's high impact, low impact, or is it feasible or not? It's very, very objective and very, very clear, straightforward to create impact because once you as a leader becomes negative, it spirals down also to everyone else. So that's, that's uh, what I can say. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I have another mm -hmm. question from Nilo Nazario Aguba. And the question is, is it safe to relax the proactive attitude and adhere for the meantime, a conservative approach instead of managing anxiety? Sorry, uh, conservative approach, you were choppy a bit. Conservative approach instead of managing anxiety. Instead to manage. So it, um, the question again is, is it safe to relax the proactive attitude and adhere for the meantime a conservative approach instead to manage mm. anxiety? From Nilo. Uh, I, yeah. I don't think it's a conservative approach because you're pretty much looking at everything that you have and how to make yourself Stable. 
So I don't think that's going to, you're basically giving your all with what you have right now to keep yourself afloat. That's the easiest way to say it. So is it conservative? No. Uh, it actually requires more work because you have to understand what actually gives you more impact for the company and what does not. So it actually needs more uh, thinking, more planning in, in this stage. Right, so there. Okay. Well, you know, it's good that you took up actually uh, and discuss about the value of technology in yeah, times of uh, yeah. crisis. And, you know, while yeah. virus, I mean, this coronavirus has impacted, you know, globally uh, the lives of many people. I think one thing that has not been impacted is technology. And technology now is able to relate people to connect with each other. The challenge is yeah. not all companies or not all employees of companies are connected, meaning, you know, the yeah. availability of internet or even telecommunications yeah. is not there. How do you now manage mm -hmm. to make sure that they're engaged without having to hear from, say, the command central or HR for that matter? I mean, how could I be given a good engagement program if I'm totally disconnected by reason that I have uh, restrictions or I have no access to communication? Okay, uh, I think no what access to communication. War? Yes, sir. Sorry? You know, typical of like when you're in a war and you don't know what's going on, how are you, how are you going to connect each other and make sure that we're in the same direction or like, yeah. Well, basically that's it. If you're asking me about a war, uh, that's the first thing we will ever do, establish connection. That's, that's, uh, that's standard operating procedures. Of course, I understand that some companies might not be able to do, but I think uh, there are different ways. If you do have the resources, there are tele telecommunication companies that can actually uh, give you devices or send devices to those people if they're really needed. If not, uh, if not, you can uh, reach out to them. It's really finding out how to communicate in, in any way, in any way. And if not, try to give them certain tools that, uh, but if it doesn't exist, then it's really making, you know, it's you trying to reach out to them. So like you said, if it's in a war, establishing communication is the first thing that you have to do. So you really have to find uh, a way to do so, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't, but I think uh, based on my experience, uh, it wasn't because, you know, there's Facebook these days, I'm sure the kapit bahay or someone has a phone and then you could that's how we reach out to some of our uh warehouse employees to be able to deliver goods to them so and we were able to find out even their addresses and i'm sure that uh with you know you're you being hr you have all this information anyway so it's about it's not about the tool if it's high tech or not it's about what gets the job done so it's really that okay yeah. so you know we have uh we could probably entertain two more questions in the interest of time. I think we've, uh, we're now over yeah. time, 11.16 in my watch here. No worries. Let's see yeah. if we have two more questions that we could entertain. Somebody uh, shared a while ago that their state right now is actually more of stay, uh, stay home rather than work from home. Probably for some reason, hmm. uh, that's the mandate from the company. Uh, how do you think yeah. they should recover? How should they get quickly to the new normal to recover? Okay, honestly speaking, uh, how do you quickly get to the new normal? No one can quickly get to the new normal because right now we're still in crisis, right? So next week, we don't even know if the quarantine is going to be lift lifted, right? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a thing. Uh, I think the best thing that you can tell your employees is they're just working, uh, uh, is just staying at home and not working, uh, like webinars like this, uh, anything that would make them productive or even company suggesting even if it's not in the company's interest but for the interest of the person to actually improve that's already good enough right that's already good enough um, also uh, I'll just want to read this out because uh, the, the question here was mentioned that uh, I, I don't know if you see this Gilbert it's a very long question that says I said that the company should not act like a family right now, but of a company that needs to survive. Uh, let me let me rephrase that. I actually said that you need to be like a sports team, right? And then he said, how do you explain the good for the many than the good for one, okay? 
it's not the good for many, not good for one. It's not that sports team because if, like for example, if you're a sports team, if the sports team wins, then everybody wins regardless of what your goal is, right? It's not. It's very different from good of the many than the good of one. Okay, that's why I say uh, that family. On the other hand, is that there is a uh, issue when it comes comes to family is because you can actually forgive or make things equal for everyone if it's for family. And I've seen that in a lot of companies, they don't reprimand the people that uh, they are uh, have, who are doing wrong things because they're family and all these things. So uh, it, it's it's that. So. Uh, how to manage it is understanding how you can work as a sports team, right? Rather than treating everybody like a family. Because at the end, if your sports team sports team wins, which is meaning surviving, then everyone else actually benefits from it, right? But the problem is uh, if it's a family and then everybody starts firing down to, oh, we care for each other and all that, and things don't really, and it's not a bad thing, but in times of crisis, it's a different thing, right? So, yeah. Uh, also, Filipinos are more face-to-face -face than in call or video conference. I think that's for human beings, everyone, right? All, all human beings. So if, like, again, if we look at the negative things, what is the thing that you can actually change, right? So do the face-to-face -face on video as much as possible. And maybe it's going to be somewhat new normal. Yes, it's not tactile, but it's the next best thing that you can do, right? That, that's what, what you should be looking at also. So, yeah. But that's normal. They, you know, technology and communication could be very disruptive, even in the Filipino culture. So people mm. are used to the face-to-face. -face. But in times of crisis, the only way you could do, especially when we're all working from home, yeah. is leverage and availability of having communication. I mean, you know, through uh, telco or uh, internet of things that would make thing mm. uh, that would make it uh, faster to cope up to become uh, the new normal. All right, so I think uh, there's so much questions running yeah. through the webinar chat, but I don't think uh -huh. we'll be able to. Thank you guys for sending those questions and continue to ask yeah, questions. You, yeah. We're going through this. Uh, they would definitely like to answer this, but uh, we'll take it to another session, I guess. So you have a session tonight. In the meantime, let me just share with you yeah. uh, what I've compiled uh, for... Uh, Say the lessons that you know I've learned or my insights about uh, having, uh, you know, uh, how to manage anxiety uh, while promoting employee engagement. You know, so my thoughts on this are uh, effective employee communication can actually influence employee behavior and improve our engagement with them. So it is very important. They mentioned a while ago that the quality of communication is geared towards ensuring that these people are engaged and making them part of the whole uh, project. Number one is making, you know, going through the process of having the awareness, having to do the understanding, acceptance, and eventually get their commitment. So awareness that you were saying a while ago, Day, is for people to be clearly uh, informed of what things are, you know, why are these things happening, what and who, to reduce the fear of the unknown and help them understand the situation, which... Uh, leads to understanding the what, the why, and the how that you mentioned amid uh, the crisis and how this will clearly direct everybody to achieve the common goal. Now, you also mentioned that, you know, should they uh, understand the situation very well? There is acceptance, which is the first drive for them to commit. Employees will feel that they're part of the situation and that they're involved in the process. So you were saying employee consensus a while ago that they should get to. And from then on, Commitment. Employees will be able to commit to be involved and become active member of the company. And when the benefits and you know rewards are known and seen, they'll probably be the most engaged employee. So that's one of the uh, learnings and thoughts that I could share uh, for the rest of the uh, audience and public. The second thought is about having to enable an organization or HR, for that matter, with what you say, tool, technology, uh, and technique. Just like in any crisis, war or this crisis of virus, I think we need to have the, the three T's of business to have the tool, technique, and technology. One of which is uh, using survey or assessment feedback systems, or even just uh, phone in, you know, phoning uh, your employees and say, how are you doing? Are you happy? Are you experiencing anxiety? Are you comfortable? 
get that feedback and manage it. Observe and interact informally with the change uh, with 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 the change recipients with all of the changes that has happened for employees to work from home rather than working in their usual desk or office. You need to understand as the, the, the behavior of employees change. Then solicit feedback by creating deliberate opportunities for them to keep busy and engaged. Find out opportunities like this great webinar brought to us by the People Management Association of the Philippines would make us feel that PMAP coexists despite the uh, crisis that we're all experiencing. We also need to monitor the progress of our employee engagement. So monitoring the engagement through feedback channel and networks. We need to understand what's the general uh, sentiment, morale, feeling of the employee workforce. You know, for all we know, they're all happy. We just need to engage them further. Worse is that if they're not happy, then the call to action for HR is to see what activities could we have virtually to keep things running. We need to track fluctuations in terms of performance. Are they comfortable with doing work from home? How do we measure performance? How do we measure their output is something that we have to do. And this is all about tracking in general their proficiency in the, in the way that we've implemented the change. And all of this will be possible only if Again, we leverage on the availability of technology. So these are all the things that I, you know, I've learned from the session today. And again, let's all give uh, daily a big round of applause and to everyone for participating actively in this session. But before we close the session day, is there anything else that you'd like to impart to the re to the audience? Any last few uh, advice or tips? No, 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 not really. I think uh, uh, if you're worried about, uh, you know, at this time, humans can't be human because they cannot connect to each other. Try to just find out different ways to make whatever you've been doing uh, the same way. Actually, can I give an example? Just because I saw a question a while ago. How, how do you yeah. make people feel uh, that they're in the office? Because for example, in the office, you can just drag anyone in inside the cubicle area, or you don't talk to someone who's working at a certain, right, whatever, right? So I, I actually want to show you something that we can do in our executive office. So this is actually what we did was we created this. Uh, this is basically, if you can see my screen, can you see it? I think they're going to. So what we did is we're using Google. PowerPoint, uh, well, no, not PowerPoint, Google Slides right now. And what we're doing is that right now you can see that D, D, this one is actually me. So I'm going to move it a little. That's me. So right now I'm in a talk for, let's say, K and B, who are the people part of the executive office, they're actually home. So what happens here is that every time, since this is a shared file, uh, sometimes I'm here. So that means that anyone can talk. I'll just move other people to anyone can talk to each other at this time. This also means that I am uh, working isolated alone, right? So you're trying to create this virtual office kind of thing. I know there are paid programs for this, but right now the worst thing that you can do is spend resources on things that are not needed. Or sometimes you can actually see people that they're all in the pantry because it's lunchtime. So uh, things like this would actually create a sense of you actually being in the physical office. Of course it's not, but at least they won't be scared to talk to me or I won't be scared to talk to them if they're eating and I won't be mad if they're not replying because I can just look at this and say, oh, they're home. They're not going to work right now, right? So home meaning that's their virtual home. They're back at their virtual home. But right now, of course, I'm at the talk. So I have to put talk here. So yeah, that's one thing that you can do. There's so many things that you can do. It's just how to use those things very, very uh, well in terms of uh, what you need. So you don't need to look for new things. Whatever you've been using before, you can use them, modify them. Uh, Filipinos are known to be very, very resourceful. So this is the time to be able to do that more. That's basically it. But thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for everything. Again, if some people are asking, that's where you're going to download your PDF or tollgoabal.com slash ANX. Uh, you can join my session later at 7 p.m. It's maxed out at 100 people, but you know if you can get in, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I do have classes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and if you want to email me, the at Uh 
Uh, I just want to thank CMAP so much. Please just follow them. I'm sure they're going to be having a lot of these learning sessions that are very, very good. So let's let's look forward to that. I'll also be attending some. So looking forward to that. So thank you so much for every uh, to everyone. And I hope you stay safe. And for those who are practicing HR, let's make people feel safe. All right. So thank okay, you very again. much. Thank you, Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just uh, again, you know, uh, let me share. Um, Let me give you a good quote to remember. So employees who believe that management is concerned about them as a whole person, not just an employee, are more productive, more satisfied, more fulfilled. Satisfied employees means satisfied, satisfied customers, which leads to profitability. So engage your employees, engage your workforce amid this crisis, and let's promote productivity. So thank you, everyone. Stay safe and choose to be happy. Again, my name is Gilbert Kamasura, <laughs> your moderator for this morning. Thank you to Pima. Thank you to Daily. And most importantly, thank you, thank you to everyone for attending this webinar on managing anxiety and promoting employee engagement. Maraming salamat po and enjoy the rest of the day. Okay. Thank you.